Hello. Today we're going to talk about electron configuration. An electron configuration is a way for us to figure out where an electron has a high probability of being. This theory goes along with the quantum mechanic model, which is the model that we believe in today. Um, what we are really doing here is giving us a way to show where the electrons can be. Now again, I say it's a high probability of being there because electrons are moving so fast, we can't say for sure that they are definitely going to be where we say they are, but we have a pretty good idea. So in order for us to be able to write electron configurations to represent these electrons, we have to understand um, where all the electrons are on the periodic table. So I'm going to ask you to do is to take out your copy of the periodic table and we're going to try to label it so that we understand all these different electron configurations. What we do is we break this periodic table into four sections. Okay, so our first section oops, our first section is going to be the two columns that start with hydrogen and beryllium. This is known as our S block. Okay, so if you want to make a note on your periodic table, these first two columns are our S block. Okay, now the numbers 3 through 12, that makes up our next section, which is known as the D block. Okay, so that's 3 through 12, and if you wanted to make sure you had it on the bottom too, that, re that works really well. Okay, then we have our next block, which is 13 through 18. This is known as our P block. The only exception to this is that helium is actually part of our S block. Okay. And then our last section, which I hope you can see this color, is here on the bottom, the part that is separated from the rest of the periodic table. This is known as the F block. Okay. So we have our S block, D block, P block, and F block. Okay. This is going to help us kind of give us directions on what we are doing. Now, um, the other thing that I would like for you to label is your um, columns, sorry, your rows. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, now I would like for you to make a line in between the S block and the D block. Okay, make a line between the S block and the D block because the D is a little bit special. And we'll talk about why it's special in just a few minutes. Okay, so now that we have our periodic table labeled, I can teach you how we read this. So in an electron configuration, there's a few different parts. There is the energy level that we're in, the sublevel that we're in, and then the number of electrons that we have for that particular element. This is all based on the number of electrons that an element has um, when in its ground state. Ground state means that the electrons are at the lowest possible energy level. Okay, so what we do is we read it like a book. So if we were talking about hydrogen, we are in the first energy level, we are in the S block, and we're the first column in. So if we were to write the electron configuration for hydrogen, you can go ahead and write these in, we would say 1s1. We have the first energy level, hydrogen is, belongs to the S block, and it is one column in. Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about what I just wrote. So you saw it on your periodic table, but what does that even mean? So our coefficient, which is 1, um, is the energy level, how close we are to the nucleus of the atom. So first energy level is very, very close to the nucleus of the atom. Those are really 
um, low-level electrons. Then our letter is our block, um, and so it's the section of the um, periodic table that we're on, so we can kind of think of it as the sublevel. Next, we have the exponent, which is going to be the number of electrons in that sublevel. Okay, so it's the number of electrons. So again, we have our coefficient, which is telling us the energy level that we're in. Then we have this letter that tells us kind of the part of the periodic table that we're in. And then the exponent, which is the number of electrons in that sublevel. This right here is kind of considered the sublevel. Okay, so now let's go a little bit further. We have, like I said, we have these different blocks. We have the S block. We have the P block, we have the D block, and we have the F block. Okay, so what I want us to do is think about, well, what is here? In the S block, we have two columns. So in the S block, there's a maximum of two electrons. In the P block, if we count across, we have one, two, three, four, five, six columns. So that means that we have a maximum of six electrons. In the D block, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So in the D block, we have a maximum of ten electrons. And then in the F block, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we have a maximum of fourteen electrons. Okay? So this is how we're going to figure out our numbers here. So what I'm going to go with um, go through is all these different electron configurations so that you catch the pattern. Okay? So we always start back at the beginning. So we already did hydrogen, but now we're going to do helium. So helium, we're going to put our finger on helium in the periodic table and start from the beginning. We are in the first energy level, and we are in the S block. And we are in one, two, second one on the S block. So our configuration would be one S two. Okay, so now, the next one that I have here for you is lithium. Okay, so lithium is in the second energy level, but we have to go all the way through what comes before it because we have to have the total number of electrons. So again, we start at 1, S, because this is our S block. And because we have gone all the way through our S block in order to get to lithium, we have completed that sublevel, so it gets the maximum number, okay? Now, we go to the next level. So we're in two. Again, we're in the S block, but we're in the first column of the S block, so it's one. All right, let's do beryllium. Beryllium is also in the second energy level, but we have to include everything that came before it. So one, S, two. Now again, we're in the second energy level. We're the second column in, so it's one, S, two, 2s2. Okay, now we have boron. It's all the way over here. So we have to start from the beginning. So we go all the way through 1s, and notice that boron is past that, so we include that entire um, sublevel. Then we go to our second energy level, and boron is past it, so we include the entire sublevel. So second energy level, it's in the s block, and we've gone past the two columns. So we say 2. Now if we go across, we haven't changed energy levels. So we're still in 2, but now we've entered the P block. So we write 2P, and we are the first column into P, so we say 2P1. All right, now let's do carbon. Carbon is right next to boron, and so we notice that we have to go all the way through our first energy, S block, 
then our second energy S block, entering into our second energy P block. So we have 1S2, 2S2, 2P, again, we can count how many far we are, 1, 2, 2P, 2. Okay. Now, why don't you try nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine on your own? And I'll put up the answers and see if you can get them. Okay, so notice we're just always starting from the beginning and putting our finger on the element that we're trying to get to and just backfilling all the way until we've gotten to that spot. Okay, now sodium. Sodium's all the way over here. So we have to complete the 1s, the 2s, the 2p. Now we're in the third energy level. So we're going to do 1s2, 2s2, and then we're going all the way through our 2p sublevel. So remember, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 2p6. And we've gotten to the end of that energy level. So we go back to the beginning. So third energy level now, S1. Okay. Magnesium is going to look similar. It's just one further. Okay. So... We have to complete the 1s, the 2s, the 2p, and the 3s. Now it's really important that we are including our entire electron configuration because it helps us um, make sure that we have accounted for all the right um, electrons. So we know that in a neutral atom, um, our number of electrons is equal to our protons. So let's do a check here. Let's say sodium. If we look at sodium, it has an atomic number of 11. So because it's neutral, we should have 11 protons and 11 electrons. Okay? So here, we said that the number of electrons is represented by the exponent. So here we have 2 plus 2 is 4, plus 6 is 10, plus 1 is 11. So we've done it correctly. Okay. Now, aluminum, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, argon, potassium, calcium, these all act the same way that these do. We're just continuously going. So why don't you try them? I'm going to do them and you can check to see if you got them correct. So, we completed the third energy level, P sublevel, okay? So, when we're going across from aluminum all the way to argon, the beginning part should look the same because it's all of the sublevels that we've already finished. 